Tape number four. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The author, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The types of worship that Allah has commanded, such as Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, and other types of worship, such as supplication, dua, fear, khawf, hope, raja, reliance, tawakkul, longing, rugba, dreading, rahba, and submissiveness, khushur, awe, khashya, repentance, inaba, seeking assistance, isti'ana, seeking refuge, isti'adha, asking for help, istighatha, slaughtering, dhabh, taking oaths, nadhar, and all of the other types of worship that Allah commanded. All of these belong to Allah alone. The proof for this is Allah saying, the places of worship belong to Allah, so do not call unto anyone along with him. So whoever directs any part of these acts of worship to other than Allah, then he is a polytheist, disbeliever. The proof of this is Allah saying, And whoever calls unto another God besides Allah, of which he has no proof for, his reckoning is only with his Lord. Surely the disbelievers will not be successful. Chapter number 23 Verse number 117. Also the hadith, Dua is the core of worship. The proof is the saying of Allah, Your Lord said, Call upon me and I will respond to you. Those who scorn my worship will surely enter hell in humiliation. Chapter number 40, verse number 60. Explanation by Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan. May Allah preserve him. There are many different types of worship, and the author did not mention salah, zakah, or fasting. This is because shirk often occurs in the types of worship that he mentioned. And also, the types of worship that he mentioned, people do not often consider them as being acts of worship. The hadith, dua is the core of worship, is weak. However, a more authentic hadith is, Dua is worship. How is dua worship? Allah said in the following ayah, Your Lord has said to supplicate to me, I will respond to you. Those who arrogantly reject my worship will enter the fire with those who enter it. So here, Allah connected between supplicate, dua, and worship. Therefore making dua to other than Allah a form of shirk. Supplication is divided into two types. Number one, supplication of worship. It is an indirect supplication such as prayer, fasting and hajj. Directing it to other than Allah is major shirk. Number two, supplication for a need. It is a direct supplication, such as saying, cure me, ease my affair, etc. This requires further explanation. Number one, that which only Allah is able to grant, asking anybody else besides Allah, is major shirk. Number two, that which humans are capable of granting, is permissible with four conditions. Number one, the one being asked must be alive. Number two, the one being asked is present or able to be reached. Number three, the one being asked is capable and able to respond. And number four, you believe that the one who is being asked is only a means. He cannot bring about benefit or repel harm 
himself independent of Allah. As for the one who believes that the one whom he is asking is able to bring about benefit himself or repel harm in of himself, then this is shirk. People are divided into three groups with respect to their beliefs regarding the means. The first group believe that only what Allah has made a means can be as a means. This is correct. The second group believe in and use means which Allah has not made a means, such as amulets. This is minor shirk. The third group believe that the means themselves have an effect. They bring about benefit or they repel harm. This is major shirk. How do we know a particular matter is a valid means which we can utilize? Answer. Either it is legislated in Islam, such as Rukia, which is used to cure illnesses, or it is something which is scientifically proven or known by experience, such as medicine. The author, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The proof for fear, khawf, is Allah saying, Do not fear them, but fear me, if you are believers. Chapter number 3, verse number 175. The proof for hope, Raja, is Allah saying, So whoever hopes to meet his Lord, then let him perform righteous deeds and not associate anyone in worship with his Lord. Chapter number 18, verse number 110. Fear is of three types. Fear of worship. It is the fear of the worshipper for the one he worships. It involves complete submission and glorification for the one being feared. It is major shirk if it is done for other than Allah. Natural fear, such as fearing a fire, an enemy, an animal, one's parents, etc. This is permissible. Prohibited fear, losing hope in the mercy of Allah or obeying creation in disobedience to the Creator. The author, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The proof for reliance, tawakkul, is Allah saying, And upon Allah alone put your reliance if you truly are believers. Chapter number 5, verse number 23. And his saying, And whoever relies upon Allah, then he is sufficient for him. Chapter number 65, verse number 3. The proof for longing, ragba, and dreading, rahba, and submissiveness, khushur, is Allah saying, Verily, they used to rush to do good deeds, and they would call on us, longing for his reward, and dreading his punishment, and they used to humble themselves submissively before us. Chapter number 21 Verse number 90. Explanation. The meaning of tawakkul, linguistically, is to rely upon something or someone for a need. Islamically, it is true reliance upon Allah, trust in Him whilst taking the necessarily means. Three matters must be present for tawakkul to be correct. Number one, truthfulness. Be truthful in your dependence upon Allah. Number two, confidence that Allah will fulfill what He has promised. Number three, taking the necessary permitted worldly means. Ragba, longing, means loving to reach something which one desires. Rahba, dreading, a fear which leads one to flee from the object he or she fears. Khushur, submissiveness, means humbling oneself to the greatness of Allah, 
by submitting to his universal and legislative decree. It is a must for the traveller to Allah, the perfect and the most high, to combine between fear and hope. It is not correct to overemphasize one of them and maintain a balance. Fear and hope should be both present like the wings of a bird, without which it cannot fly. Losing hope in Allah will make a person despondent and losing fear of Allah will make a person arrogant and bashful.